Hello fans, Film Recaps here. Today we are going to cover a 2013 comedy, crime drama film called, We're the Millers. The movie starts with a guy named David Clark who is a pot dealer and he lives in Denver. He supplies drugs to a lot of drug abusers in the town and lives a happy single life. One day, he encounters his college class fellow, Rick Nathanson on the street and gives him a drug too. David's neighbors, Rose O'Reilly, who is a broke stripper and a teenage boy named Kenny Rossmore are aware that David deals in drugs. One night, when Rose and David return to their apartments, Kenny spots some rogues robbing a woman outside. He goes and talks to the rogues but they hit him in the face. David also comes there and tries to sort out the matter but Kenny reveals to the rogues that David is a drug dealer and the drugs are inside his backpack. The rogues threaten David with a knife and ask him to hand over the backpack to them. Helpless David somehow flees the spot but he gets caught and robbed eventually. The next day, David's drug supplier, Brad Gerdlinger, keeps calling him but he doesn't pick up any of his calls so Brad sends a couple of black guys to pick up David forcefully. After David is brought to Brad, David tells Brad everything about last night. When Brad learns that he has been robbed and has almost lost everything he had, he reminds him that David owes him 400 bucks. Then, he forces David to go to Mexico to smuggle marijuana from Mexico as a solution to clear his debt. David tells him that it could be a risky task and could get him sent to jail for 25 years but Brad says that he has no other choice left. He tells David to use the name, Pablo Chacon, to get the smidgen of marijuana from Mexico. David realizes that it can be suspicious if he attempts to smuggle marijuana alone so tries to convince Rose who doesn't agree to be involved in his plan. Rose quits the job when the club's owner asks her to sleep with the customers to get more money for the club. She returns to her apartment and finds that she has been evicted because of not paying the rent on time. David hires Kenny and a 19-year-old petty thief named Casey. He decides to take them with himself as a bogus Miller family across the border. David, Kenny, and Casey get a makeover at a salon and they set out to Mexico. Before the plane takes off, Rose shows up and joins them being Mrs. Miller. They reach Mexico airport where a recreational vehicle arrives and they all head to a compound. A tall man named One Eye takes them inside the compound and asks his men to load marijuana in David's RV. The Millers find that the amount of marijuana they are picking up is not as smidge as Brad told them but actually two tons. After they come out of the compound, a Mexican cop stops them and asks David for a bribe of $1,000 or someone out of the Miller family whom he can abuse. David wants to save his money so he goes for the second option and asks Rose to fulfill the cop's demand who turns out to be a gay. Then, David convinces Kenny to fulfill the cop's demand but as soon as Kenny agrees, the cop says that he wants 1,000 pesos which is a small amount for David. He gives the money to the cop and they leave in the RV. The Miller family stops at the US border inspection station where they meet the Fitzgerald family consisting of Don, Edie and their only daughter Melissa who are on a vacation. Suddenly, a pack of drugs falls into Rose's lap while she and David talk to the Fitzgerald's family. She quickly wraps up the drugs packet in a small blanket and makes it look like a baby in her arms. A cop asks the Miller family to get out of the RV for inspection but before he could inspect them, he is diverted by a group of rogues on the station that lets the Miller family escape from there safely. Pablo Chacon arrives at the compound with a man named White Gringo who had to pick the marijuana from one eye. It turns out that Brad sent David to pose as an agent of Pablo Chacon to steal his marijuana. Then, Pablo takes one eye and White Gringo in his car and they leave the compound to find the Millers. While the Millers are on their way back to the US, one of the radiator hoses breaks because of the extra tons of marijuana on the RV. The family they had met on the border called the Fitzgeralds, catch up to them and tow the Miller's RV to the repair shop. On the trip to the repair shop, Rose and David learn that Don Fitzgerald is a DIA agent after finding his badge and gun in the glove box. They arrive at the repair shop that is closed so the Fitzgeralds invite the Millers to spend the night with them. The Millers find that Kenny and Melissa Fitzgerald have fallen in love with each other but Kenny is somehow nervous to confess. David gives Kenny some tips about how to approach a girl. After that, David and Rose sneak into Don and Edie's tent to steal the keys of the RV but as soon as David touches Don, he and Edie wake up and they reveal that they both are homosexual. They try to approach Rose and David who somehow make an excuse and get out of their tent. In the RV, Casey teaches Kenny how to get close to a girl. Just then, David and Rose appear there and Rose joins Casey to teach Kenny some things that could help him approach a girl. While Casey and Rose rehearse getting close to Kenny, Melissa finds them involved in a shameful act and leaves the RV in disappointment. The next day, the Fitzgeralds drop them at the repair shop to pick up their RV where the Millers encounter Pablo and his henchman, One Eye. They capture the Miller family in the repair shop and learn that they are not a real family. The family also tells Pablo Chacon that they did not know that they were stealing from him. 
While introducing themselves, David reveals that Rose is a stripper that draws Pablo Chacon's attention towards her. He asks Rose to prove that she is a stripper by dancing, and when she gets closer to him, she turns a steam vent onto him. The Millers escape in the RV that's driven by Kenny. Due to his erratic driving, Kenny veers off the highway. A tarantula from a bowl of fruit given to them when they were picking up marijuana, crawls up Kenny's leg and bites his private part. He screams in pain and they all get out of the RV to check on Kenny whose private part is swollen and Rose suggests that he needs to go to the hospital. David is reluctant and tells her that they cannot do this because they have to get back to Brad with the marijuana. However, they all take Kenny to the hospital where Casey finds an attractive guy and gets his number. David calls Brad and asks him for a fee of $500,000 for how he escaped from Pablo Chacon and One Eye. Brad agrees for that amount but on a condition that David will deliver the drugs that night or else Brad will cancel the deal. The doctor tells them that Kenny has a severe reaction to the tarantula's venom and he needs to be there for the next few hours. This frustrates David because he has to deliver the marijuana to Brad's place that night and staying there will delay it. While Rose, David and Casey are in the RV outside the hospital, Casey's newly found friend named Scotty. P, whom she met at the hospital, shows up. Before he could take Casey with him on a ride, Rose and David stop him and talk to him for a while because they are concerned about Casey. Then, Casey and Scotty. P leaves and Rose tells David about herself while doing the dishes. She tells him that her boyfriend Jimmy is not a good partner and he has looted her bank account. Rose reveals that her real name is Sarah. This astonishes David and he also tells her that his real name is Barbara. After a while, as Rose and David are about to get closer to each other, Casey returns to the RV. In the next scene, Kenny is discharged from the hospital and a nurse brings him on a wheelchair. David becomes happy and takes Kenny outside the hospital in excitement that makes him lose control of the wheelchair and Kenny falls to the ground. While Rose shouts at David, he accidentally reveals the amount of money he will be getting if he delivers the marijuana that night. This makes Rose and Casey angry and they tell him that they want to renegotiate but David does not agree and leaves in the RV alone. On his way back to Brad, David calls him and informs him that he will deliver the marijuana within less than three hours. At the carnival, Casey shares everything about smuggling marijuana and the fake family to Scotty. P who tries to approach her but Casey rebuffs him. Just then, Rose and Kenny appear there and threaten Scotty. P to stay away from Casey. When he does not listen to them, Rose punches him in the nose and he leaves in anger. Then, David shows up at the carnival and requests them to join him on his way back to Denver. But Rose, Casey and Kenny do not agree and they tell him that he has offered them a small amount of money for that big but risky task of smuggling marijuana. They ask him to kneel down and beg them to join him again in the RV. David does just as they ask him to do and promises them that he will distribute $500,000 equally among them. As they all move towards the RV, they find the Fitzgeralds again. Melissa asks Edie to leave the Millers because she had seen them in a disgusting act last night. Edie thinks that Melissa had seen her and Don abusing Rose and David in the tent so she tries to explain this to Melissa. Melissa becomes confused and she reveals that she had actually seen Kenny doing awful things with his mother and sister in the RV last night. This makes Kenny feel embarrassed and he reveals the truth about their fake Miller family. As soon as Edie and Melissa come to know that they are smuggling drugs, One Eye shows up from behind and threatens all of them with his gun. Just then, Dan comes out of the RV and attacks One Eye with a metallic mug and knocks him out. He then asks Melissa to call the police who returns with Pablo Chacon at gunpoint. Pablo asks Dan to hand over his gun and mug to him and then he leaves Melissa. The Millers tell Pablo that they will return his drugs only on the condition that he will not kill any of them. David reveals how much he loves his new family members and how each of them matter to him. Pablo tells him that he will kill David first so that he does not have to watch his family die. Then, a massive firework at the carnival distracted Pablo that let David snatch his gun. After that, David confesses his love for Rose and so does Kenny for Melissa. Don and Edie have also revitalized their relationship and the Fitzgerald family hug each other while Don lets the Millers leave. In the next scene, we see that David has delivered the drugs to Brad who tells him that he will not pay him a single penny because he has not delivered at the appointed time. David tells him that he has gone through a lot of risks to get the drugs to him but Brad shows no concern at all and admits that had never intended to pay David. Just then, the DIA agents crash into Brad's place through the skylight and arrest him on the spot. The agent in charge is Don who tells David that he will have to be in witness protection until Brad, Pablo and his henchmen's trial. In the last scene, we are shown that the Millers live in a glorious and big house. Casey has started a YouTube channel where she uploads funny stuff and her channel is getting a lot of attention. The Millers introduce themselves to their new neighbors, Dan John and his wife. As the Millers sit together in their lawn, 
a lot of marijuana plants are seen growing in the garden and the movie ends here. Thanks for watching guys.